Welcome everyone to our show, AI News. My name is Ethan, I'll be your host today. Today we have a very special guest, Mike Cargyle. So uh, Mike, please introduce yourself a little bit and then uh, tell us which district you're representing. Sure, and thank you. Thank you for having me on. Uh, my name is Mike Cargyle. I'm running in the 35th Congressional District. It's basically Pomona, Chino, Ontario, Montclair, Upland, Rancho, and Fontana, and Eastvale. Uh, a little bit of Chino Hills in there as well. I think it's the greatest district in California. I've got a drag strip. I've got a NASCAR track. People who love cars, this is the greatest district. It really is. I've got two of the best gun ranges in the state at Rahagas and, Pro and uh, Prado shooting range where they do the skeet for uh, the Olympics they've done. It's great. I have an international airport in Ontario. I have arts and entertainment in Pomona. This really is the greatest district in California. It's only going to get better with me because I have a vision for it. And I'm running against a lady from Guatemala. She's a communist and she's very big into killing babies. She's won awards from Planned Parenthood mm. and has supported abortion at every stage even after the child is born, because after it's born, it's no longer abortion, is it? That's killing babies. That's what we call infanticide, yes. murder. Yes. And so that's just one of the many things she's involved with. Uh, she's a very key for Nancy Pelosi in Central America. Mm. She's helping George Soros to subvert our greatest allies in Central America, in El Salvador and, and now Guatemala, uh, so this is an international race, unlike any other congressional race in the country, really. Um, but here's the thing. For the United States, California is the key. Everything comes from California, good and bad. Silicon Valley, computers, technology, entertainment, it all comes from California. California is it. But everything bad that seems to be going on to the nation also originated in California. Indeed. You know, everything bad starts here. So the key is California. And I believe that my race is the key to California because hmm. we have now, because of what I just mentioned, my opponent and her attacks in Central America, she is helping to galvanize the Latino support behind my race in a way that's never ever existed. And the reason that this is coming about is I stood for the president of El Salvador and supported him publicly. The only one in the country who's doing this because he is pro-God, mm -hmm. pro-family, pro-life, pro-police. He wants, he wants law enforcement. And he's taken on, you've heard of MS-13? Yeah. The Notorious gang. gangs. They're actually, they started in Los Angeles. And then oh, went really? Back. It's not yes. a Mexican gang? No, no. So what happened is years and years ago, El Salvador had a civil war, and then it was run by gangs. And the people were afraid, and they came to the United States for asylum. Uh -huh. Well, they all started congregating in Los Angeles. So the biggest population of Salvadorans outside of El Salvador is Los Angeles. And that's where the gang started. Uh -huh. And then when they went back to El Salvador, they took that gang mentality and then it just it flourished, you know, the horrific because it was lawless in El Salvador, which was fertile ground yeah. for a gang like MS-13. And now they're the, the worst gang in the world. But we actually created that here in Los Angeles. We're responsible I, for I did not know that. so many of the, the ills around the world. Indeed. Yes. For not, not just... Uh, gangs and violence, but culturally too, yes. like abortion and then uh, gay marriage and all these anti-family kind of things started here. What do you think the problem is in California and in overall in the United States? What do you think the biggest problem we're facing right now? Well, it all starts and ends with the church. We have to have pastors who are willing to step up and be shepherds for their sheep. Now, in the Bible, the pastor is called a shepherd. Mm -hmm. And a shepherd 
not only nourishes and, and feeds and waters the sheep, but he protects the flock. Mm -hmm. And a good pastor will actually give his life for his flock. Right now, we have pastors in the United States who look more like sheep than they do a shepherd. They're just simply part of the flock. They're not leading. They're not calling them out. They're not confronting sin. Everything you just mentioned, the homosexuality, the assault on families, the transgender agenda we'll, we're dealing with right now. These are not political issues. You know, abortion is not a political issue. Killing babies is not a political issue. Those are biblical issues. Uh -huh. And the biggest problem is, where's the church? Where are these pastors who are willing to say, no, that is sin, and call it out publicly in their own churches? You know, forget about talking to the world about their sin. Because remember, John the Baptist lost his head because he called out sin publicly. And we have pastors who won't defend the murder of children. Well, what, what will they defend then? You know, what are you standing for, pastor? If you're not going to call out murder or infanticide or suicide or drug addiction, you, you could go the list. It's always been and it always will be the church assuming its role in the country and in the world. And right now the church is missing in action. Yeah. Why do you think the church is so weak these days? What, are, what, what, are they, what did they do wrong? Because they're, in, in the pastor's minds, success is measured by the number of people that come into their congregation. They have forgotten how God grows a church. God grows the church, not the pastor. And think about it in terms of sheep. If you have a flock of sheep, does the shepherd grow the flock? Mm. No, sheep grow sheep. The shepherd doesn't grow sheep. The shepherd provides the environment and the safety and the nourishment, which is, you know, the Bible's the word of God and it's the food that you feed the flock with so that they are set apart. But sheep grow sheep. When your flock is healthy, you get more sheep and they have lost that perspective. They think it's their job to grow the flock. And so they haven't called out the sin and the behavior of their own flocks. That, I can't think of a better answer. Wow. <laughs> that, is the, that is the answer that I've been looking for. Uh, I think the biggest problem is that all the churches are trying to appeal to the world and they're saying that we're losing young people young people are not going to church anymore and why is that oh we need a swimming pool we need a basketball court we need a tennis court that is actually not what young people want want young people want law young people want to know how to be a man young men want to be a man a yes. mature man a man that know what to do, a man that's in control of their life. But right now, all the churches are basically making themselves become a Disneyland. Hey, come here and have, have, have fun. We have all these activities for you to have fun. Church can be a fun place, but it's, it's fun because you're learning and because you're growing. And I think that is the biggest problem with the church right now. Um, what do you think the church can do to uh, save our country? What can, what, what can the church do to make this country, to, to attract more people into a, have a righteous mindset? Well, you're talking about the young people right now. I have two kids. Mm -hmm. One's 21, one's 19. Okay. And their age group is dealing with depression. They're dealing with suicides. Fentanyl, overdoses, killing them. You know, why? Why is this going on? Because these kids are looking at the world around them and they have no hope. They have no hope. They see a country that offers them less than it did their parents. They see the world as spinning out of control. They have no control and they're terrified. And there's no one out there giving them hope. So in this hopeless state, you turn to drugs, you turn to sex, you turn to anything to numb the reality that you're facing. And that's, you're going to die yeah. and you have no hope. And where is the church saying, no, 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 
We have the answer. The answer is Jesus Christ. But we have pastors that, oh, I don't want to confront sin. You know, like you just said, you want the socially acceptable environment. No, the reality is you're about to die, whether it's from COVID, drug overdose, whatever it is, and you're terrified. Mm -hmm. the, re the answer is you don't have to be. Mm -hmm. Only a Christian has no fear of death. Yes. Only a Christian. So where's that message? But you can't just say, oh, I want to become a Christian. You have to give your life to Jesus Christ. Name him as your Lord, meaning your master, your savior. I'd have a life that is worthless. Lord Jesus, take this life. Please forgive me for what my, I've done, my mm -hmm. sins, how I have violated your rules, your commandments. But take this life. It's yours now. Make something of it. That's the hope the world doesn't have. And only we have that message. But the pastors, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to be political. Yeah. I don't want to be, you know, confrontational. You shouldn't be sleeping with your girlfriend. You're not married. That's a sin. Mm -hmm. You know, where's that message? You know, you shouldn't divorce your husband because you don't like him anymore. Mm -hmm. This is a this is a covenant relationship. Where is that? We have more divorces in the church now than, than the world. We, have, we don't look any different than the world. That's why we're making no impact right now. Yeah. Our lives must be a reflection of Jesus Christ, that righteousness, and that peace. I have a peace that no one around me has. Mm -hmm. and, and people know this. They, uh, I, don't, I don't cuss like they do. I don't, my, my language is different because my thoughts are different. Out of the heart, the mouth speaks. So I am different. And people know this as soon as they meet me. And as soon, I have people, you know, they'll, they'll throw an F-bomb or something right after they talk to me. And they go, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't have to say <laughs> a word because you know I'm different. Yes. I'm not like the average person you're going to meet. And that's only because of Jesus Christ and his spirit who lives in me. So everyone who's watching this, that's what I want for you. That's why I'm here. Wow. And I also want to add, like, young people have no goal, no sense of purpose in life. Yes. My, my pastor once told me, like, uh, that, that time I wasn't a Christian. And he's, he's my pastor. And he just go like, hey, how's life? And I'm like, life sucks. And then he turned around and go like, without a purpose. And that time I wasn't a Christian. I was just like, oh, okay, Mr. Purpose. <laughs> oh, you're, you're so purposeful. Yes. But then I read the Bible and I understand it. And I know my purpose. My purpose is to be more like Christ mm -hmm. so I can use my life to tell people hey, you should be more like Christ because you'll gain happiness, you'll gain a purpose, you'll, you'll have something in your life that you're worth fighting for. And I think that is the most important thing for young people today. Young people don't have anything to fight for. Everything is provided to them. Young people want sex. Mm -hmm. And sex used to be you have to work hard on yourself, you have to uh, grow, you have to be likable. You have to uh, know how to talk to women. And then maybe one day you'll meet someone and then she's perfect and you like her and she like you too. And then you guys get married and you guys can have the sex you want. Mm -hmm. But now they can just go on the internet and they can just uh, hook up culture. Mm -hmm. And that is the biggest problem. Our information becomes so fast and our knowledge becomes so... What, what we want, it's so easily accessed. So we don't have to work hard for it. And we lost the goal and the purpose of working hard. Well, in, in tied up in everything you just said, you have the act uh -huh. without a relationship. It, it, indeed. And so marriage is the relationship mm -hmm. that sex becomes the ultimate adventure because you have a, a relationship that's based on everything you just said, love, but you want to be attractive to your wife or your husband. Because I, I had some young guys come and they were thinking about getting married. Mm. And they said, you know, should I marry this person? Should I not? And I said, it really doesn't matter. And I said, because if you look at Ephesians 5 and how it describes a husband's relationship to his wife, mm -hmm. 
I said, remember when Ephesians was written, they had arranged marriages. Yeah. You didn't get to pick your spouse. Your parents yeah. picked your spouse. And it worked out fine. Yes. <laughs> and, and that's because of, of, of what Ephesians says. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. what you think about your spouse, whether they were picked for you or whether you picked for them. The husband is to love his wife unconditionally. He is to love her like Christ loved the church, which is sacrificially. He gives his life for his wife, his bride. She is his everything. And it never says for the wives to love their husbands. Mm. It only says husbands love your wives and love your wife in this manner. Why? Because if you love your wife like that, she can't help but love you back. That relationship is cemented in the love the husband expresses. And that love is a reflection of the love of Jesus Christ for his church. That is the most solid foundation you can ever have on this earth other than your own relationship with Jesus Christ is a marriage based on sacrificially loving your spouse. Wow. That, that's some uh, <laughs> preached. <laughs> wow. So uh, right now we have a lot of problem uh, within our family. Uh, we have more broken family than ever in the United States. Sure. We, have, we have even more broken family than all the rest of the world, like percentage-wise. What can the state do to uh, save the family? Or that is the church problem? Well, it is the church's problem. Mm -hmm. and, but we have a political system in this country. And that's, I'm running for Congress. Mm -hmm. uh, because we have got to get back to the foundations of our nation. That's what we have gotten away from. And it's so important that we have Christians running for office. And I, and I don't say that cavalierly. The country was founded on a belief in God, yes. not any God, the one God. And in our Declaration of Independence, it says that all men are created equal. Created means you have to have a creator. Yeah. And, and they are endowed by this creator, God, with certain unalienable rights, which are intrinsic to all people all over the world, that these people from God have the rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Mm -hmm. So only a Christian, get this, only a Christian can then sit under that God standard, which is the Bible, mm -hmm. which is the framework for how this nation was created. Because the, the standard sits above me. Mm -hmm. That's the biblical standard. I sit under it. And if we remove that standard, it drops down to my opinion because I don't have anything over me. I'm the lawmaker. I'm the top. And then I would govern with my opinion. Yeah. What's my opinion? Not what's God's opinion, but what's Mike's opinion. That's very, very dangerous. And that's where we are right now in Washington, D.C. People who are governing by their own opinions and their own standards. And that's how they can make laws. If the baby's born and you don't like it, you could kill it. That's not murder. Why? Because we've removed the standard above us and we've adopted our own standard of what is murder or what is lying or what is stealing or what is cheating. And we have right now a dual system of justice in this country because one side has gotten away from any standard above themselves. They are their own gods, mm -hmm. right? They are legislating as if they're God. Yeah. And that's what they've done. And I, I, can't express how much we've got to get Christians not to proselytize. I mean, I can. I can tell people about Jesus Christ all day long. But in governing a nation, we need to have people who recognize our foundation and why those foundations are essentially biblical foundations and that we sit under them. And I'm responsible to the people of my district. But more importantly, I'm responsible to God for the, the freedoms yeah. and the liberty and the blessings this nation has enjoyed for so long. I don't want to lose this. And we are very quickly approaching that place. Oh, we are, we're definitely losing freedom and uh, like medical freedom and everything. Uh, it, it is a big problem because people trade their freedom for comfort. And uh, throughout history, that's what people always do. 
and it always leads to socialism and communism. They trade their freedom for comfort. And then uh, that means you give a part of yourself, your God-given right, to the government to make decisions for you. And I think that is the, one of the biggest problems that Americans are losing freedoms right now. Do you think Americans are losing freedom because of, uh, only because of that? Or there's some other aspect of it? Well, I think right now we're the target of an enormous CCP takeover. Mm -hmm. I think the Chinese Communist government has been working on this for a long time. Ultimately, it will always fail. Communism is its own worst enemy. Yeah. And I say that because communism focuses on the collective. Yes. The group. It's always about the group, the state. And the United States was built on an entirely different premise. We're focused on individuals. Yes. Individual liberties. Remember, all men are created equal and are endowed with certain un unalienable rights. So we're focused on individuals. So if we're always bringing up the individual by, by necessity then, or, or as a direct consequence, the group is elevated when you focus on all the individuals. But when you only focus on the group, you don't focus on individuals. So one individual that goes down, it's okay. But as a result, the group is always weakened when you don't focus on the individual members of the group. That's the inherent flaw with communism because it, it needs, if it were to be successful, it would have to adopt a U.S. model and focus on individuals, yeah. individual rights, individual liberties, individual strengths, and then the group becomes stronger as a consequence. So right now, communism, socialism is all destined to fail by design. Yeah. <laughs> I completely agree. I know that uh, ever since I started reading the Bible, a lot of people say that, oh, in the book of Acts, that is communism, that is socialism, uh, that, that, that's when everyone pour in their money and uh, build a society based on that. And they just fail to see what happened in the end to that group of people. Do you have any message to say to those people who say that uh, the Bible are actually a form of a communism or socialism. No, that's entirely wrong, just by what I just said, because the Bible is also clear that you only go into heaven or hell as but an individual. You, yeah. You don't do it as a group. Collectively. Right, yeah. right. So it's, the Bible's always focused on an individual. Your relationship to Jesus Christ is the key. You either have one or you don't. Mm -hmm. You will either face him and he will condemn you or he will say, welcome in, good and faithful servant. But it's always an individual approach. Now, when you're talking about an ax, you're looking at a collective response mm -hmm. to an individual message. Yeah. And that was to Peter's message. And the apostles as individuals preach the gospel. And the church is a collection of individuals. But it's always the individual that's the focus. In fact, the church is called the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. That's singular. Yeah. That's not a collective. <laughs> the body of Christ. That's an in interesting uh, point of view. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you again for coming. And yeah. then uh, let's win this uh, election together. Absolutely. <laughs>